Okay, guys, I, so I uh, hope that you enjoyed that song. I uh, just recently came across that band, and uh, some of the music that they have is just so awesome. So I thought I'd start us off with something that uh, get everybody on the same thought process, right? So uh, I'm not going to do much of an introduction on this. I think that uh, I shared enough. Um, if you're here, you probably saw me sharing enough already to give an idea of what it is that we're doing. Um, so going into this, there's just a few things that we've got to kind of dive through to, to get everybody on the same page. Um, and I am winging this program, so bear with me as I try to move everything around here to show you where we're at and share my screen. Oh boy. Like I said, I'm winging this. Um, so those of you that don't know me, my name is Jamin Mishlevich. Um, I am the owner and founder of United Works LLC. The, uh... oh man, I'm just gonna change this whole thing. Okay, bear with me. There we go. Can everybody see that okay? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, okay, awesome, awesome. All right, so the whole purpose of what I have to do and what, and what we're doing tonight is because is, is to propose an idea that I have had for probably the better part of the last seven or eight years that has just not left me. And I have been feeling a lot as of lately that it just, it needs to be a reality, it needs to come to reality. And there are so many things going on in our world today we're all very aware of. We need something good. We need something that can bring a level of unity. We need something that can bring a level of, of autonomy, of, 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 uh, how do you say that, autonomy, right? We all need to be able to feel like we're independent and we have this, uh, this self-government, but then also be connected to something greater than ourselves, be connected to something that's, that's superior than, than just what we have going on in our own personal lives, right? We need to feel like we belong to something. And in our world today, we don't have very many um, consistent things in, in our immediate circles, as soon as you step out your front door, that you can see taking place that are making a positive change. We don't have a lot of things. If you walked out your front door and, and, and looked across the street, you probably see the same things every day, and you probably already know your environment and your situations and your city or your town or wherever you're coming from. Um, that are facing some form of a struggle. And so I believe that the time is long overdue that, that we propose a method to make a positive change and do something superior to what we have been doing. And our beautiful country is in need of unity. It is so in need of unity. Um, and so I have this, this uh, presentation put together for you today really generically. Um, I'm going to be completely straightforward and honest with you. I was actually tying this all together right in the end, right before I even started all of this. I actually unintentionally decided to give you that song to give me five extra minutes. <laughs> uh, so so I, I have this uh, consistent issue that in my social circles and in my, in my immediate surroundings here, um, where there isn't a lot of principle in the way that people live. Um, there's really, there's really a, I mean, I mean, most folks have this, this backbone in their lifestyle that they lean on, right? And there's a lot of, of uh, good, valuable people or good, valuable influence and, and, and structure and principle guiding the, the day to day, but we get stuck in the routines of life and the, and the jobs and the, the circumstances. And I don't see happiness on people's faces anymore. And I used to, I used to, I remember growing up, I used to walk across the street and I, and I could, I could freely walk wherever I wanted and it was safe. Today, I'm afraid to let my kids walk outside by themselves for a little too long down the street or go through um, certain areas of town and, and 
and this this uh, overwhelming sense of a degenerative mindset is prevalent in, in a lot of different areas. And so I mean, we're, we're faced with constant issues. Even, even in society, we have our youth are facing identity crises. They have no idea really who they are anymore. The, the belonging um, that is a core principle, a core belief in, in, in individuals and humans is so far stretched by media, by school, by advertisements, by a series of just unconventional, which is now conventional, disillusions and confusion. And it's not right. Um, you know, there's wars, wars right now. We just all learned about Ukraine and heard about what was going on with Russia. Um, there's a, so many things that are kind of compiling all together simultaneously. Um, facts have become fiction. Truth is buried in lies by not only the media, but even our immediate government in our town, in our cities, our municipalities. Um, power is displaced from the people in a government setting where we live in a, in a, in a constitutional republic. We are faced with this constant fight between being self-sufficient and independent in our homes to being dependent on grid. And grid is amazing. I love that I can have all of my utensil, utilities and everything running all at the same time. Um, but unfortunately, what that does is it creates a microwave thinking. And we have this, this microwave thinking in America where we want it quick, we want it easy, we want it handed to us on a silver platter. And, you know, I like to put a burrito in the microwave, it's done in three minutes, and then that's that. I didn't really work for it, um, but it's super convenient, and I get to go work on something else because it's quick and fast. And so that convenience is, is normal now, and it's a blessing, and it's awesome. But because it's become so normal, because, I mean, even on my phone, I can take my gigantic computer in my pocket and I can learn anything I want it, it, in seconds, just Googling it really fast. And that's amazing. We live in an amazing time, but we've become dependent on it. And that's dangerous. That is dangerous for a free people to be dependent on anything. It's, it's, it's borderline ridding us of, of certain levels of agency. And I want to return that power back to the people, not, in, not just in my own family, but I want to help establish something where my kids and their kids and their kids can continue in living in this level of freedom and abundance and not have to sacrifice quality of life to achieve it. Um, and then on today's world, the, the entities that kind of run the planet are, are, are heralded as, as superior to the family. And that's, that's just not true. It's just not true that the family would, these entities wouldn't exist if it weren't for the families who support them, right? Um, our, and our youth are, are diving in head first into these asphalt oceans, these cities of, of degenerative materials, chemicals bombarded with all kinds of frequencies and whatever else you want to you wanna throw into the, the, the wellness factor that leaves them drained and sapped spiritually, energetically, physically even. And then they, they return back home with all of that. And, and hopefully we can, we can give them something better at home. Um, but, but really what it all boils down to while we're facing this in economic instability and natural disasters and in, in diverse places, right? We have threats from the government on the sanctity of our agency and this confusion we already talked about that's up and for our up and coming generations. We need a reason. We need a reason to fight because apparently what we're doing already isn't enough. Um, and if, if there's, if, there, if what is already existing is only causing us to do what we're already doing, nothing will change. And so we need something that is going to give us not just a, a freedom and an ability to move forward, but, but something that will ignite that fire in us and give us a real solid, tangible thing to do. Because physically, tangibly doing something is the solution. Talking and talking and talking is never going never gonna to change the planet, right? Um, for me, the reason that I do what I do is my family. Um, I mean, the families of America, right? We, we all have the, the immediate loved ones in our social circle. These, these are mine. So I got, I got four boys in this photo, but I actually have five adorable little dudes. Um, all boys. That's my beautiful wife. And my whole reason for life is, is these kiddos and that beautiful woman right there. Um, I really, I really 
crave nature and the peace and the sanctity that I find in nature. And so we, we raise our boys in the backyard and the, in the developing food forest and, and all of these projects that we can get our hands on that get them in the dirt. Um, and that's my little guy. Um, his name's Lyndon. We actually named him after a, one of my favorite trees. <laughs> um, but, but really it's about the health and the wellness of our kiddos, right? We're, we're not just trying, we're not just faced with all of the craziness of the world. It's also doubling down on the, on the health and the wellness. I mean, our, my mom is a health coach and she was recently, uh, I had a conversation with her a bit ago where she said in my generation, um, you know, we, we could eat freely and, and, and we had most folks were, were fairly healthy and well off, but then the same eating patterns today are producing less wellness and more health problems doing the same exact things. Um, and so that being the case, it makes you it put into perspective how over the last decade or two, three decades, these, this bombarding of chemicals and who, whatever else has gone on in the world has brought everything to this point now where the same head of lettuce is reduced in nutrients. It is fed with more chemicals and it is grown in even poorer environments and shipped longer distances before it finally is landed in your shelf and sold to you for more money. And so now we have this cycle that's repeated through generations to just continue this, this negative impact. So, so my issue with that is pretty, pretty clear. I don't, I don't like that. I think that we should be able to grow a head of lettuce for free, eat that head of lettuce with more nutrient than we get anywhere else in the grocery store. And we should be able to, to uh, reciprocate that same knowledge to our kids because we know as a people that uh, food, shelter, and water are the basis of our, <laughs> our ability to survive, right? Um, and my little boys here, the, this, this garden bed here, they help me build that. Um, so I know uh, I, I kind of jumped right into something, so I do want to give you a little bit of who I am before I go uh, too far forward here. So United Works LLC is the company that I formed uh, some years ago. It was originally a company called Make Change Mentoring. And me and my wife, uh, we started in personal development um, a long, long time ago. And when we developed Make Change Mentoring, the whole concept was to make positive change. If you could make positive change in your life and your, and your circumstance and those lives of those around you, then you would have this ability then to grow in a positive atmosphere in a positive direction and your tilt in life would be up right so if that is something that that drives you i hope that this the rest of my presentation here will will, will speak to you in a growth mindset and an abundance mindset right um, with United Works LLC, we founded a couple different projects. So one of them is Lulu's Garden. Lulu's Garden is a 0.87 acre food forest, um, right in an urban setting, and it is all based on perennial agriculture. And so I'll talk a little bit about that later, but that's a big deal. Um, perennial agriculture should have been the way that the country was founded in the beginning, but it is not. We are founded in, in um, annual crops and annual foods, which require an immense amount of labor and very expensive or large amount of uh, spaces and areas and fields to cultivate them and then export them into, into the societies. Um, Faith Havens is another project that we're developing. We're starting on that one, actually. It's not even been, the so first shovel has already been in the ground, but it hasn't been around for very long. It's a this year kind of project. And so that we're really excited about. That's uh, just shy of 12 acres. Um, and that is in an, a rural setting. Um, and then there's Haven Permaculture Design, which is my option that I am hoping to expand upon to give um, others the opportunity to network with me in what I'm about to present to you and employ the, a, the professionals in the field that know much, much more than, about these things than I do on their scale and in their niche um, to be able to make an impact. What you'll find as we, as we go forward, especially, is there are so many professionals in the world that are very good at what they do. And I'm not saying every single level of professional is engineer or, or let's say architect or, or agricultural guru, whatever you want to call it. 
but there are levels of professionalism where somebody might even just have a hobby or a passion and it can be such that it drives them to know everything about that thing everything so when you come down to the moment of needing that thing you'll find that if you had a way of connecting to, with them if you had an open source where you could connect with these individuals you would be it would be nearly impossible not to find somebody that has a solution to your problem and that is the power of unity that is the power of a joint effort right um, when we all have our individual work our works our power our mission our goals our drives what it is we're doing we're working towards and we unite that with another's and another's and another's and another's now we have these un this united works that is all functioning together in a system and in a, in a systemic way where everybody can have access. And this is a, a culture that builds upon culture, person that builds upon person, like people helping people. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So um, Rob, Rob Stiltanen said, people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And I believe that jo uh, Steve Jobs said that too, but I don't like that guy. So I used this, <laughs> this picture. Um, uh, that is really the truth. If you feel like there's something that you can make an impact on, fact of the matter is that you can because you said that you could. And if you don't, who will? So this is this whole presentation that I'm about to give to you and that I'm already started here is is based around an idea. This is not something that I have fully mapped out all the details of. It's not something I even have all the answers for. It is an idea for the change makers. And I am seeking to exist higher within an, a level of the regenerative paradigm. I recently was in an, a, in a, uh, I was recently in a, in a course with uh, Verge Permaculture, really amazing organization. If you ever want to reach research them, reach out to them. They're incredible. Um, in that course, he, uh, Rob Avis jumped on and he talked a little bit about the regenerative paradigm and it, it hit me in a way that never had hit me before. And the way that he explained this is there are three brackets to the regenerate to two paradigms, right? Three paradigms. There's the degenerative, the sustainable and the regenerative paradigm. Now, our I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but our goal as a society and as an individual and as a person of, of growth mindset should be based in the concept of regenerative paradigms. It should be based in the concept of being able to move forward and excel and grow and then give back and look to the person behind you and, and each one teach one kind of philosophy, right? And then this cycles back through again, you know, nothing is wasted. Everything is give and taken and it's this cycle of, of growth. And if we can get to that level of thinking in a regenerative paradigm, then we will win as a society. We will win as a people, right? So this is for those change makers who are seeking that growth mindset, seeking to look and live within those paradigms. Um, this is for those who just want peace. I just want peace. I just, I just want peace. I don't want to, I don't, I'll be honest. I'll be frank with you. I don't want to do all this. It's really complicated to sort through all of this. It's really laborsome and time intensive to try to dissect the details of a society and a network and a globe and an issue with the economy. And even designing a food forest can be really intense. It's not always fun, but it is rewarding because the level of peace that it can yield is absolutely incredible. The level of joy that you can experience when you can lay back in a food forest and just ex exhibit pure independence and feel that vibe is absolutely incredible. Um, and, and for me personally, it extends even further than that because for a long period of time, I have recognized the, uh, the constant corruption at every level of government. Um, and I, I grew up, my dad was Navy. Um, he was, he was on a, a battleship. My grandpa was world war II. I actually, just a couple of years ago, I don't know the whole story yet, I, but uh, I found out my father, my grand, my grandpa was part of the, the brigade that brought Hitler down. So I have this patriotism that flows through my, my blood, right? Um, and for that, for, for me, it, it extends beyond 
even just seeing it all and and really just hits home i really have a desire to make a positive change i mean like i said earlier my first company was make change mentoring there are so many things that i can discuss with you that i don't have time for tonight that that i could help give this this elevation of thought to expand your bubble and help others and collectively reach a higher level of thought and i struggle in so many different ways but i'm really good at opening the mind right and really good at, at that level of, of conversation and so that's where I, I focused at that time uh, with my business and things have moved a little bit further into the earth ever since then um, but i actively seek to make a shift um, not just in my personal life but in in my surroundings in my community. I, I take service opportunities when I can. I work with individuals virtually. I, um, professionally, I develop food forests and, and regenerative agriculture models. And, and I move forward in, in what I know how to do. And then I hire somebody to do what I don't know how to do, right? So there's no limit because somebody always has a solution like I talked about earlier. Um, so this is the kind of people that I'm, I'm looking to present this idea to. Those who are looking to make a positive change, those who can recognize the things that we need to change, and those who are really ultimately just looking for peace and happiness for them and their loved ones, and just want that prosperity and abundance. Um, and especially those who are actively seeking and actively doing something in their immediate surroundings, because you've already maybe witnessed some of these things. Um, this is not, this is not this concept that I like I told you I don't have all the answers to this and so I know I'm going to get some flack back for some of the things that we're going to talk about because I don't have all the answers or solutions. And mathematically, there are some things we'll have to figure out that that I'm just willing to take on the challenge, um, but this is not for those who only desire to do something. It's not for you if you're only seeking if you're only recognizing or if you're only wanting. This is for those people who are actively seeking, actively recognizing, actively making positive changes and, and, ex and currently feeling existing within their levels of peace that they can feel in their immediate today. Because there, there is a, a problem that happens in society today where we look at all the problems <laughs> and, then, and then we get sucked into them. And it's kind of like a funnel. And once you go down the rabbit hole, you can get real deep into it. And a lot of folks, that's all they can talk about. That's all they can talk about. And so if you're in the only phase, if you're in the phase of I only recognize or I'm, I only want, but, but you're not actually doing something, you're probably going to have a paradigm shift during this pre presentation. <laughs> and I hope you do. I hope I, hope I do. I know I had a couple while building it. Um, but we must not remain in that degenerative or even sustainable paradigm. We must go beyond sustainability. We have to reach regenerative. We have to reach for that regenerative paradigm. It's time for society. It's time for us individually. It's time for me. That's why I built, put this together. It took me years to finally propose this idea um, because it had been in my mind for so long that I just, I really need people to hear it. And, and I haven't seen it in my immediate circle yet. And so I hope that I am pre I'm gonna present this to you in a way that clicks and really expands on what the vision really looks like and gives you the picture and gives you the picture because I need help. That's the purpose of doing this so unconventionally, um, putting this together. I believe in unity. I'm not gonna do this by myself. I can't do it by myself. It's too big of a task. Um, what happens when you live in a regenerative paradigm is you start to care about people. You start to care about the earth and you start to care about the future. You start to kind of put together that there's these three foundational principles in life that we all run circles around daily and may or may not even recognize that people, planet and future. Right. And we talked a little bit previous about my boys. I need to make sure for my sake and for my kids sake that the future is full of good people and a strong earth. And those are my motives, right? Good, healthy planet and environment. And I had, uh, in one of my core beliefs, um, it, it is that I, I seek after everything that is virtuous, lovely, or praiseworthy. Uh, I don't like to seek or find myself seeking after things that might be a little diluted, 
And so I do my best to find things that are of high standard and high quality. Um, but there is something, if I present this to you correctly, that is virtuous, lovely, and of good report and praiseworthy right here, right now in front of you. And some of you are already aware of a few of these things, and some of you, this might be the first time that you're hearing about it, but it's called permaculture. And I'm going to expand on what that is because it's probably not what you think. And the way that I'm going to present it is not tied to permaculture directly. So this is not the idea. This is an old idea. Permaculture is the method. Permaculture is, this is the best uh, description I've ever heard in all of my studying. This recent course I just took, um, he, I, I, I love the way, I, 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 could, I can't speak highly enough of urge permaculture. I've heard permaculture disguised as so many different things. And the way that, that Verge has laid it out is just incredible. I love it. Their definition was, um, is the con permaculture is the conscious design and maintenance of agriculturally productive ecosystems, which have the diversity, stability, and resilience of natural ecosystems. It is the harmonious integration of landscapes and people, providing their food, energy, shelter, and other material and non-material needs in a sustainable way. Now that is really critical to the idea that I'm going to present to you. If we don't, if we didn't have permaculture, this might not work. So, so core ethics are earth care and permaculture are actually earth care, people care, and future care. How ironic is that? The principles that guide permaculture designs where we build these ecosystems and these sustainable communities or homes or shelters or whatever it is, even business models follow these 12 principles. And this is going to be recorded. And so if there's any slides that I show you guys that is there's too many words on there or something of that nature, it's going to be uploaded to the YouTube channel. And so you can follow that at that time and just pause it on that phase to catch that slide. Um, today, we're going to discuss a little bit of the opportunities, the projects and the ideas that connect everything I've showed you so far. Right. And then a little bit more. And like I said, this is a really rough and generic presentation. I, I was kind of putting together these slides um, right before we started this. And so if you have questions, uh, we'll get to that at the end. So two of the ways that I'm currently making positive change in my immediate surroundings, we have what's called Lulu's Garden. So so Lulu's Garden, this is a really important idea for you to get your heads around. If you haven't already heard about this, this is this is going to be kind of the staging point for the idea that I'm going to present to you. Lulu's Garden is a urban backyard garden. That's that's really the generic way of saying it, but it is actually being developed into a permaculture plan. That permaculture plan includes everything required for human needs and wellness to be met within the immediate property itself. That means water, food, even business and surplus, and then of course shelter year round. Um, it, is designed specifically in a way where that surplus will actually be going to the community and nobody will be living in this home. It is going to be an open uh, space for demonstration purposes. Um, this is a photo of the of, of a portion of the garden. And and that's the logo there for, for Lily's garden. So if you ever see that, you know what you're looking at. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about that specific project, you can go to uh, we got a Facebook channel and then it's Lulu's garden permaculture. Um, and then we have a second project. This is the one I already mentioned to you that we're starting right now. And this one is Haven or faith havens. So this is actually my personal property and home where we don't partner beyond us being the land, uh, in inhabitors. Nobody else will live on this property with us. Um, and it's my family's permanent homestead. Um, but this design plan is actually being rendered currently and it sits on just over 11 acres. It's supposed to be, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, if I get, and if I get enough help, I seek to build the biggest food forest in Missouri right there. And we have some access to the surrounding properties as well, which you can't see, um, in this, in this slide right here that goes to the left and down to the, to the south. Um, and this is a picture of that property, uh, just standing on it right there from last season. Now, in the, if you want to look into this property, actually, before I go forward, the, we share the details on our development there on Instagram. I'm really trying to get away from mainstream medias like Facebook and Instagram, but for now, that's where we're at. Um, so you can go to Instagram and then Haven underscore permaculture and we'll, and we'll, we post updates on there. 
So, so Haven Permaculture is located in Missouri, northern Missouri, where it is nice and hot and humid. And this, our soil is, is literally black gold. I put anything in the ground and it just grows. It's crazy. I'm from Wyoming, where everything was ash and sand. So <laughs> that's a, a nice uh, shift. Um, and, but unfortunately, because it's so abundant and green over here, we do have a lot of maintenance and keeping things from growing. Uh, God kind of got his hand in nature and they did whatever they wanted after that. <laughs> So, so Faith Havens, like I said, is intended to be our, our home base. And we've bounced around the, the boundary a little bit. It was 12.5, now it's 10, it's gone back and forth. So it's some, we're, we're not sure where we're gonna settle the property. All right, I got my little guys over there. Um, but that's gonna be the, the, the beginning project that I would really like this idea to be based out of uh, moving forward. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, our goal, uh, living there is to have an impact it's not we're not doing it just so my family can can live peacefully in our in our little forest um i like to be change maker i like to have a positive impact in my society my, my surroundings my social circles and so we really hope to open that up in a lot of different ways um but going forward here so so when we, when we put this together, and I'm gonna model this just a little bit for you so you can understand the concept of, that we're running with, um, not just as an organization, but me personally, the, all the properties that I personally design have a few bullet points. And a couple of those are, they, they're focused on family environments. They foster a holistic lifestyle or allow or enable those lifestyles. They're based in ecological diversity in a myriad of different ways. Typically we focus on perennial vegetation, especially. Um, and then the whole system has to be an anti-fragile uh, infrastructure. If you don't know what anti-fragile is, I encourage you to look that up. Um, but we really are trying to foster a quality of life where freedom and agency reign supreme. That's the bottom line. Um, and we offer at all of the locations where we have a stewardship, we, um, we, we try to push the, the mentorship standard of education where we work one-on-one -on -one with folks um, even in our consulting and design soft, uh, programs. And, and when, when Lulu's Garden is done, this program here is actually going to offer a class where we'll be doing walkabouts and, and we'll do the same thing at another property in Wyoming. Um, but this fact right here, number seven, this bullet point, this is what the, the con this is the holdup, right? The barter and trade surplus network. What do you know of in your immediate idea? Let me pose this question and you go ahead and put it in the comments. What in your immediate circle gives you a barter or a trade network outside of just the fact that you're a gardener and your friends know that, right? Or maybe you're, maybe you're working in a certain area where you're able to get surplus of a certain thing or industry once in a while or a skill you can trade or whatever. If you're not already living in that space, I encourage you to start thinking about how you can. This is a big fact in moving forward. So, so this concept, the barter and trade, um, really is the bullet point of this whole presentation. What I realized a few years ago, uh, I founded the company Make Change Mentoring, and I had this this aha, and I was like, oh my goodness, what if? these incredible powerhouse individuals got together and in their niche in their their personal strength not even their not even their their job not even their their corporate abilities but their 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 yearning their desire their their real core strength what they like and love to do and would do for the rest of their life and feel like they were never getting paid but because they didn't it didn't matter but if they could be living in that space of pure I don't, for lack of a better word, pure joy, nonstop in this creative thinking, what if that individual, that powerhouse of an individual could unite with another powerhouse individual and this person and that person, and now we could have this, this coalition of sorts where all of these amazing individuals and amazing organizations put their resources and their strengths and their assets together and had a council and had a leadership standard and had a system where then they could pose ideas and they could mimic those ideas based on a standard of living, based on a principle or a set of principles, and then create these impacts all across the country. 
And I was thinking at that time during Make Change Mentoring, I, it really was based on education. I was going to go into the youth um, camps. We were going to do uh, ropes courses, personal development seminars, all those sorts of things to try to help expand society's thought bubble. Um, and those were the social circles that I had at the time. And I was really kind of putting aside my passion in nature so I could focus on my passion for personal development. And that's where I, I kind of just little by little dropped that idea. And I and ended up not running with that. Um, but it never left my mind. And, and I've always understood this fact right here. And uh, Victor Hugo said, an invasion of armies can be resisted, but not an idea whose time has come. That is a powerful sentence. That is a powerful quote. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's time that this idea got some ground. Over the years, I've taken that concept and it's been probably four years, five years since I thought of this. And, um, and I, I really haven't dive, dove into how to structure it or how to, how to do it. Um, but the, the concept was called the Mentors Coalition. And the Mentors Coalition was going to be just what it, it says it is, a coalition of like-minded mentors and individuals who collectively could make impact across the country. Just it was designed impactful events, circumstances, projects, whatever it may, it may be. But because I wasn't focused on those things for a period of five, six years, um, I was able to dive into more of what I was passionate about. And one day I walked outside so upset that I didn't have a garden because it, I had, my family had moved. We actually, we live in Missouri now. I was at that time I was living in Wyoming and I was like, I was looking at the world and I was like, you know what? My passion was growing up in the mountains. I would walk outside my back door and I could be out there for days and I'd never, never come home and just loving it. I was, I grew up with a father who taught me bushcraft and survival. And, you know, I trained with, with different emergency personnel. I was on the fire fireman crew with a, as a volunteer. And so they went camping once in a while. And like, we had lots and lots of good structure in our in our social circle to get out in the mountains so i was really really connected to nature um and i remember this time as a kid i i walked outside and and there was these dragonflies just everywhere and i noticed they were flying in a weird pattern and they landed on a fence all together and they just lined this barbed wire fence and i remember looking at them i was really very, i was very young and i looked at them and i was thinking to myself how beautiful that was and i just walked up and I picked one up on my finger, none of them flew away. And I just held it on my finger and just looked at the details up close of this big dragonfly. And that was when I was living in Leighton, Utah. And, and I was blown away with how beautiful the dragonfly was. And ever since that time, the ecology of the world, biology, it all just naturally, I, I, I get it. I understand it. I feel like I'm not, I'm not super good at all of it. I don't have all the answers, but, but it gets it to this level with me where my passion comes out. And I feel that drive that's just native. And so over the years that I wasn't doing personal development, mentoring, coaching, um, visionary mastery, that sort of thing, I was able to explore that desire. And so one day I walked outside and I just put a garden bed together. And I was like, you know, it would be really nice if I just turned this place into a permaculture food forest. <laughs> and, I got, and it was like a light bulb went off my head. And I was like, oh, that's exactly, I, I, I should do that. Why am I not doing that right now? And it, and it hit me like a rock. And so what I did was we spent the next year laying out a back to Eden style wood chip garden off to the side. That's about a 30 by a hundred. And, and we, we got it all prepped for the perennial plants and we did annuals the first year. And now we're getting the second year we did the perennials. And then we started mapping out the whole property and finishing the actual design. And, and I started to just let all of the worries and cares of the world go away so I could focus on the dirt. My, my, my freedom and my, my joy is found in nature. And so I just sucked it up. And then every time that winter came around for the next three seasons, um, I, I came to this place where uh, it was really sad that I couldn't go outside. And so I started diving into more of the research about how to design things and how I could be better steward of the planet and whatever, whatever my personal pr prerogatives were before, trying to dissolve those barriers and get new paradigms. And, and that's actually what led me earlier. I discussed verge permaculture um, this last uh, fall season. I was like, I really need to extend my education and we're going into winter. Why don't I design a new plot all year long 
or all season long. And so I, I looked up Verge Permaculture um, and that's where I diving into that with them. I, they totally huge, huge paradigm shift through that, that series of education, a lot of really good folks there. Um, but that brought me full circle, right? So, so if you haven't looked at this light bulb long enough, I want you to get the concept. It takes one idea to change something. I walked outside and I said, I wanted a garden bed. Now this whole property has become this, this, uh, this phases of development, right? Of a, of a food forest of something beautiful. Now, the idea that I am proposing to you today is called TIAG. And it is based on the concept of a coalition. The concept of a coalition, this is, this is what a coalition is by definition. An alliance for combined action, especially a temporary alliance of political parties forming a government or of states. There have been in history coalitions that have run entire nations. Coalitions of parties, for example, political parties can run entire governments. The power of a coalition is incredible. Now, if you could imagine a series of individuals, every individual, uh, joining the same thoughts and level of thinking that a coalition requires to work in, in unison and in team one with another at the level, at the, at the, the uh, ambition that could control or drive a government, the people would have so much power. There would be so much ability for few people to move forward. So, so that's, a, that's kind of a, a surface level of what I'm going to share with you today. This is how I, I'm thinking that we should, we should move forward as a society. And I really want to pose this idea because it really it makes the difference. So in permaculture design, it, the goal is to render an anti-fragile property. Um, this property right here, for example, uh, just this little dot that I got on the screen, uh, follows all 12 permaculture principles. Let's just pretend it's a property that's, that's designed very well. It's already been implemented. Now it follows all 12 permaculture principles. And I'm not going to read all those off. You can do that another day. Um, but if it followed all permaculture principles, it would be known as not just a permaculture property, but an anti-fragile design. And that's really where we need every home in America to, to be established. Now, if you could, if I could give you a visual, this right here is Lulu's garden. Uh, some of our harvest on the left side, the raised beds that we build and the uh, a little makeshift trellis my wife threw up with sticks. It cost us nothing. And we had so many tomatoes coming off of that. But, but if you go to the store, you got to buy those tomatoes for a ridiculous amount of money. They are way less nutrients. They're depleted in so many things. I don't even know if that I could list them all. And then whatever nutrients they do have in them comes from synthetics. They're doused with chemicals, fertilizers, all kinds of different things. And then they get to your shelf and they charge you all kinds of, especially lately, with the inflation, um, incredible numbers. So, so now we're looking at this, this trellis here. You can't see all of it because the picture is taken when they're green. If you zoomed in, you'd see a whole bunch of green tomatoes on that. But, um, but that was built on a hugel culture bed. And this, this is a permaculture uh, tool, a permaculture uh, technique, um, where you, you use organic elements to form a nutrient stable and nutrient sufficient and, and even more so over year by year, uh, garden bed. And every year it gets better and better and better. Now with that one Hugel bed right there, um, all of the harvest on the left side could grow on that sufficiently for the first year, just fine. I've done nothing and I've used them all. Um, and the raised beds, the property here that we have um, at Lulu's Garden, it was, it was really important to me to make sure that we didn't just design a plan for the property to have its own food, right? We also need to have all the rain catch. We need to be able to have the food, water, shelter covered, right? But then where's the wellness? And so there's now, we've designed it to the property areas where we would be able to just hang out, um, have some zen, have some peace, do some free write or journaling out in the, out in the, in the forest somewhere. And this is only a 0.87 acre little property. And, and that's not even, that's, that's edge to edge. If you look at it as the county plot, they say that it's like 57 because they take, I think 15 feet from my, from my street all the way in, which is a ridiculous amount of property that they, they jurisdict or, uh, or have in their jurisdiction. So, so actually it's pretty smaller than that, but we're, our yields are fantastic. 
So now if, if we had this concept, right? So let's say, say we didn't just have food, water, shelter, peace, and, you, and, and, and this atmosphere, but now we need a surplus. Now we need a surplus. So this property can yield more than just can supply for us and the family living in it. What if it could also be profitable? What if the neighbor could accept some of that yield? And now we're not just providing for ourselves on this little property, but we're also feeding our neighbor. Now imagine what if your neighbor did that? And then the na his neighbor did that. And then his neighbor did that. Now, what if all the way down your street, you had these anti-fragile homes streetwide? Here at Lulu's Garden, we don't just do raised beds. We actually help other gardeners get established by offering seeds. Um, we have a, a series of, of different things that we do to, with, in partnership with my mom and some other folks that we know. Some of you probably already know her through the seeds. Um, but but we, we focus on giving people the tools to do what I'm talking about tonight, right? And I'm going to just peek at my slideshow here to make sure that I am on the right level with you. I think I skipped ahead a little bit, but we'll jump right into this anyway. So this is, this is another option um, of design that was actually done in, in Evanston, Wyoming. Um, and it, it follows the concept. So all of our designs, right? They follow from water access and structures. And that's where the that's where the, the, the beginning base map forms. At Lulu's Garden, we followed that same pattern. And this is the wood chip garden I just told you about. Um, and that tree that planted there was actually one of the first things that we did on the property there. And so now where I get my passion and my fun is I jump into this, these properties, right? And so now you see the little green dot at the top of the screen. This regenerative garden um, is based on, on perennials. It's based on perennial food. So then this one, property, right? So here's the concept. I hope I've given you enough of the ideas to consider uh, what it would look like if an anti-fragile house existed, property, right? Your property, your house. Even if you didn't have an acre or you didn't have 12 acres, if you had half an acre or a quarter acre, or even less than that, you have enough room to catch rain, to grow food, and to have surplus. It's just a matter of your design, your specific needs. And, and there's there's no, there's really no barriers. If you live within a regenerative paradigm and you're limited because you live in an apartment, well, look across the street, there's a whole bunch of grass or there's a whole field or your neighbor's got this property that's a, you know, a degenerative lawn. And, and now you have the opportunity to walk across the street and help him. And, and now you share surplus. And so there's this regenerative paradigm that you can exist in, or you can look at things in a space of lack. Or maybe you're already existing and this property right here is going to be one of the, the next few slides that I'll show you. And you're, you're already in the rural areas with acreage or an existing permaculture farm. Um, we'll get into how that plays into this idea here shortly. So now picture this as an urban home, just, just one permaculture property in an urban setting, right? Now that anti-fragile home has the ability to influence its community. And through duplication, it can help move its model into its cult, into its immediate community. So now your street, like I said I meant just a little bit ago, your street can be this anti-fragile home. Now you're influencing your neighbor, then you're his neighbor and his neighbor across the street until eventually your entire street is a full and littered by permaculture properties. And that happens because you led by example happens because you did something maybe you were like we said in the beginning maybe you were conscious of the uh circumstances around us and you were aware of them and so you decided to take action and do something for your personal family you went outside and made a garden bed like i did and then maybe that exploded now you have uh this you wanted to go do it on your acreage and so now you've got this whole big operation out in the county um, whatever, whatever your level may be, you have an ability at that, at whatever capacity it is to influence your area. And so in this demonstration, I'm giving you a street example. Now imagine if that duplicated even further. I am introducing to you a concept called TIAG communities. So TIAG is a network, so to speak, based on the principle I already shared with you about the mentors coalition, right? So now if I had these streets, right, let's say that in my town, I have a little tiny town, it's really not that big, but, but if my street here at Lulu's Garden, um, right here, had this ability to duplicate 
its its model and regenerative paradigm to my neighbor and its neighbor and its neighbor, and then that street and then that street and that street. Eventually, now what happens is we have this whole community. Now imagine if that community all enlisted into the same philosophies of give and take, trade, barter, share, share some more, right? Uh, this, this cycle that we can exchange one with another. Now imagine if that, that city uh, wasn't just a, a town of, of a bunch of individuals, but let's say the whole city, really, the, the whole community got on board with this paradigm shift. Now you have this, this influencer speaking for you. Maybe now you've got this ambassador in your area, or maybe you've got an actual set of things that you're doing to get the community involved, helping people understand that you can do this for virtually free or helping people understand that you could dump a whole bunch of money into this and get a full on profession or whatever, whatever level you want to do, wherever you want to your come from to be right now, let's say if, if those communities, now let's call them TIAG communities. If anti-fragile TIAG communities existed all throughout a county or all throughout a, a city, let's say. So now we have inside this city, we've got regions. There's a TIAG community over here. There's a TIAG community over here. There's a TIAG community over here, now over here. And my personal vision, I should have shared this a little bit earlier, but my personal vision is a food forest in every yard and a mentor in every home. That is my life's motto. Those are the two things that I know that I can help make an impact with. And that's where I lead from mentorship and, and regenerative models. So, so that being the case now, imagine these regions are, are the way that they are. Now imagine that's a city. It's not just the regions inside or towns inside neighborhoods inside. It's the whole city really has been encompassed by this community of, of participants in this paradigm. Now, if we had the ability to move this anti-fragile TIAG city into the, the influence that it could pose being that level of, a, of an entity or just because the people really run the show, um, we now have the ability to influence other cities. So now there can be this barter and trade, not just from you and your neighbor or from your neighborhood to the next neighborhood, but now the city can trade with the city next to it. And the agricultural zone between it all would be virtually obsolete because the homes could provide their own food. They, they're catching their own water. They're, they're, maybe there's community wells. Maybe somebody took the initiative and bought an empty plot of land and really just dove into the thing and provides for the people who don't have any land at all. And maybe they're, they're diving even further into this and going into more regenerative models where now they've been a kind of a herald of the, of the concept in their whole area. Right? Maybe this person's being the leader for their, for their zone. So now this ability to barter and trade between cities is expanded. Now, this concept is super simple because it starts on a personal level, your backyard. Then it can expand into your influence because you led by example. And when you've already led by example, you become a mentor. And a mentor is, by definition, really, is a... a a person you trust with advice that works. A person you trust with advice that works. That's a mentor. So now if you exist within that mentorship realm, what you've already done, if you put a, 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 a tomato seed in a cup and set it on your window and it grew, now you can mentor somebody in how to do the exact same thing who lives in an apartment and doesn't have the ability to grow something. Or maybe you're doing full on acreage and you're developing these communities of your own and you have an entire permaculture community in a space that you have ownership of or some business partnership, the scale can, can be unlimited. Um, and now you exist within the professional realm because you're able to reciprocate that education to the person behind you. Now it can go through homes, communities, towns, cities, all the way up to the entire nation eventually being led by the regenerative paradigm. Our problem can be solved pretty easily. Um, Jeff Lawton said that uh, every problem, and or, or uh, oh man, how do you quote him exactly? I'm sure some of you already know this. Um, every problem in the world can be solved in a garden. I think I said that a little bit wrong, but that was Jeff Lawton. So the concept is not just that you need to grow food to be happy. That's it's so far beyond that. Permaculture isn't even a garden. Permaculture is a design science 
and it's founded, it's fabric really is in the implications and, and the, the ability to move and manage agricultural productive ecosystems, agriculturally productive. And so a garden is kind of the framework, kind of, kind of the, well, not even the framework, it's kind of the foundation cornerstone. Um, but there's so many other aspects that we can plug into by utilizing that model. And I don't think I have it on here. I had a really good picture that I was going to show you, but we got to get out of the concept of looking at the nation, like it's falling apart. We need to put some roots in it. We got to get our grounds a little firm and a little skits. You know, you know how on a, uh, I, I'm speaking to a wide group of people here. So some, some of you might, might know this already, but if a tap root, for example, reaches deep down into the soils, one of its jobs is to anchor down. It anchors down that tree. And now when the heavy winds blow, it hits against that, that leaf layer, that canopy, and it doesn't tip the tree. If anything happens to that tap root though, typically depending on the, obviously the species of tree, uh, it doesn't fall until something takes place and that taproot is severed or broken or rotted or eaten away by bugs or whatever, whatever may have happened. And then now that tree is, un is unstable. What happens when you, when you clear a space all around a field and leave just one tree? Now that tree who didn't build the resilience to take the wind by himself gets knocked over in the storm. I come from the place that if we could bind together and find a model that worked, we could cause this barter and trade, this reciprocation of a virtually a closed loop economy between permaculture properties all the way around the, the nation. And we could become a green nation, really. The, green, the concept of green nation in, the, in media is so skewed. It's a terrible concept. It's based in, in sustainability. But what are we sustaining? Rob Avis just said this in, uh, in, the, in the Verge Permaculture uh, course I was just talking about. He says, what are you sustaining? Why do you want to stay in the sustainable paradigm? I mean, do you like, I mean, we're full of chemicals and toxins and media bombardment and advertisements, and we're drifting away from the planet itself. And even our very biology is being questioned. We're, we're coming in with genetically modified things of all sorts in science today. And we're running into this technological age. Like, what are you wanting to sustain? Is that what you want to sustain? I personally don't sustain that direction. I would like to move forward into something more regenerative. And so I am aiming for this uh, truly permaculture nation. Now, the opportunity that I want to present today is based on my company, United Works. I don't know all, I don't have all the answers uh, as to how to do this just yet. And I, and I did skip a slide, so I'll try to go back to that here in a second. But, but the, the concept is unity. If we work with our local green professionals, our local permaculture designers, our local regenerative ag cult guys, you know, our, our local installers, landscapers, construction, whatever their profession may be, even consulting, um, maybe it's not design. Maybe they just want, maybe they don't want to implement anything. They, somebody just has a skill to consult in business or even government whatever their level of niche may be, whatever yours may be, what I propose is that we make ourselves available professionally to the network so that we can become not just nationally influential, but globally influential and have a mentorship that spans outside of our own front yard. And then, and as I said before, Jeff Lawton um, quoted, all the world's problems can be solved in a garden. And it truly, it really, it really can. There's a level that I don't understand because I'm not an economist. There's a level I don't understand because I'm not a, a, a permaculture guru, right? I, I, I only know so much and in my specific, specific experience in education, but another guy who's been doing things maybe longer than me can answer those questions that I can't, you know, and vice versa. Um, so if we, if we utilize this concept of a regenerative nation and a closed loop economy and a a network where we can barter and trade and communicate and leverage one another, that's really where the, the, the anchor can be dropped and we can feel that, that stability. I and mean, we can we send the tap root down, right? And then, and bear the winds of the storm. Everybody's feeling brewing. I talked to somebody just recently 
um, and what they said was was uh, they felt like they felt like there was this increase in in uh, oh, let me get my screen shared off there. They felt like there was this increase in in this like heavy heaviness overhead, and and they were bothered by that. And they said, I don't know what to do about that. Well, this is what we do. This is what we do. Um, you know, there's a level where where we can join forces and 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 take ourselves to this this level of camaraderie and support one for another, where we don't have to be kind of feeling the drudgery and the and the questions. Um, so I propose that we form what is known as the TIAG network, um, and we make ourselves available professionally to it. And I'm not, I, I come from a place of, of having, you know, speaking as a presenter on the idea or the concept, or even, even professionally as a businessman, but, but really I'm opening the floor. Um, I just want to see this idea off the ground. I just want to see something created where we can take advantage of it because the power should be with the people. The power should have always been with the people and it should be right now with us in our backyards, on our roofs, collecting rain, right? Food, water, shelter, whatever. Um, and part of the uh, slide that I was going to show you, I'll see if I can pull it up, is there are properties all around me um, that are already doing what I'm, what I'm talking about. They are being built and established um, in this gigantic circle all the way around my area and it is incredible to watch because what's happening is there are there's 2,000 acre property that I'm aware of there is a, a 500 acre property that we have potential to, to leverage there is a my my personal tw uh, 12 acre and then the urban uh, 0.87 acre demonstration site um, then there's a 97 acre right beside um, I don't Pull that up again, Faith Havens, um, that 12 acre property. Um, and then surrounding that just behind it, there's another plot where they're moving into regenerative agriculture models as well. Um, and, and they have a, a whole big operation that they wanna farm. I don't know all of their goals yet, but, but the permaculture concept, the regenerative model is getting a grip in my area. And it's not just getting a grip and everybody thinking we need to do this in our backyards. It's getting a grip all the way to the level where everybody goes, you know what, eventually we're going to be trading with each other because there's not going to be another option. But, but I'm, not of the, I'm not of the mindset where I'm going to look at, at the society around us collapse and go, okay, well, we, it's, all, it's all falling apart, so why try? You know, I, I, it, there are so many things wrong today that if you try to list them all off, it'd be a little overwhelming. Um, but there are more positive things happening right now all the way around the globe than have ever happened before ever. There are entire movements, communities like what I'm proposing right now that already exist. There are efforts globally that are connecting nations and cities and towns. And there's even, there's even a, a green wall in like four different nations now that are trying to take back deserts. There are huge movements in regenerative paradigms. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I encourage you to Google those, those key words because they will pop up all over when you start searching the right words. Um, but in my particular area, I would really like to, to center the focus and start rippling out. And I will, I will show you that slide. I feel like it's a good demonstration. It helps to kind of give the visual of what I'm talking about. Um, in permaculture, there are zones, right? If, you, if you're familiar with the concept of permaculture design, we do things from a sense of, of, of design. It's, an, it's a very intentional design. And because it is an intentional design, oh, there we go. Um, it, can imp it can make an impact in, in, at every level that you design it. There, it's, really, it's really cool that way because uh, design can be heralded on your personal property or you can do it on a scope that is business or you can do it on a scope that's societal or you can do it uh, in, your own, in your own immediate personal development habits, routines, whatever you want to call it. So this is an image that uh, I put together for the slideshow and then didn't even put in the slideshow. Um, I am right kind of in the, the heartland of, of the US. Um, 
the the goal that I have is far far greater than stopping at the borders of the United States. But for my purposes, this is where I live, so this is where my community is, right? Um, and my background in 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 from my father and my grandpa, all of them being part of the uh, part of the the military and, and different levels, I really have a love for the United States, and so it's hard for me to see some things that are happening. Um, in different states and, and cities where I have loved ones or vice versa or whatever. So I believe there's a ripple effect in society. Uh, and that ripple effect can be, it can be good or it can be bad. It can be based on observation or it can be based on action. Uh, you can stand around and watch and everybody else might ripple around you. You can just get kicked around as the, as the waves come or you can stand up and make your own. Um, I propose that we rise up and we do something a little different, a little unconventional, um, but strategic. And so I'm looking for people that are willing to help me build this and are, are looking to contribute their abilities to form this, this coalition, so to speak, um, this barter and trade network, even globally, uh, when it's time. I, I don't see a limit for this sort of an idea, and I do see a need. So I'm going to open the floor for just a minute. And if anybody has a question, we'll, we'll hash out a little bit of thought. But if you don't, I, we'll just adjourn it. So um, I don't know how to unmute everybody. So if you raise your hand or, or uh, put something in the chat, I will unmute you. Jamin? Yeah. Um, I missed a little bit. I was a little bit late. So, um, and I can't remember. I know we've talked about this before, but could you remind me what TIAG stands for? You probably said it earlier, but I missed it. Yeah. So, so the, the idea, the concept has to move beyond the name because this is a specific slogan or a acronym for the United States, but I would like this especially to see some ground here in Canada, um, especially since I've been recently connected to a lot of people there through Verge, I think is probably already something like this that exists out there. Um, but TIAG stands for the Independent American Gardener. Independent American Gardener. What does the T stand for? The? The. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, I love this. I love this idea. I love this concept. I'm super, super excited. It fits in with so many things that, that I've been thinking of. And I'm excited that you're recording it. Will you be sending out the, um, the recording? I have several people I know I would like to send this to. Yes, I will be doing that. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Hey, um, Jamin. Um, yeah, it's Jen. Um, I don't know if you can hear me all right. I'm just using a and pod, iPod, or your pod. Um, so are you thinking with this concept um, that you would build or you would like to build um, a, an app or some kind of um, online program where people from, you know, not just the States, because obviously I'm in, I'm in Canada, but um, that they can log on to their particular area and right. then be able to trade within that? Is that what you're thinking yes. as far as growth goes so are you you're uh you were there for for the conversation on high lows right so you know yeah. how a little bit how high low did its zoning um mm -hmm. for certain projects that's kind of the model that i'd like to follow um and i would even move to to starting this on high low because i think that'd be better a lot better than than other group options that we could forge right now um, yep. but the end game would be to have something accessible all hours of the day and so an app would be the, the best way to move right there's um just for purposes of um being able to see how a system like that may work um there's actually a, a telegram group in calgary um it's called the trading post okay um it's not it's not just um you know um permaculture food like it's uh, everything but if you want or anyone who wants i can it's a private group but i can if you just reach out to me on telegram on um soul monkey yoga and wellness then i can add you to the group just to simply observe like the way that it's done um if anybody is interested i just was thinking of that it's 
it's interesting because there's lots of food exchange and lots of other things and lots of bartering there, um, but they do lots of other stuff as well. So it might be something people. That would actually be really helpful to kind of watch how that works out there. I know, so I don't want to get too close to the concept of, of like a like a Facebook, uh, what is, what do they call it? Classifieds group, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Um, yep. I like the, the idea of, of just being able to freely exchange stuff, but the level that I would like to take this is, is it kind of, I kind of want it to be exclusive to those who are willing to act within the parameters we set. Right. So, and by setting, I don't want to, I don't want to infringe on agency. So when I say that, let, I want to avoid any thoughts that, that cross into that territory. Um, yep. But, but the concept that I'm, I'm leaning toward is, is an infrastructure base. And so it's got to have a flow that's, that's designed specifically to pass resources, skills, products, assets, whatever, back and forth between things. So um, I thought that this was on that slide. Let me show you another draft here, an image that will connect a little bit to how I was thinking that surplus could be connected. So uh, I don't, I don't uh, have an answer for how, how to keep people autonomous unless we do it in a way where there's no ownership of another and in, another individual, but we still want everybody to be connected to a, a decentralized central place. Right. <laughs> um, so that being the case, oh man, where'd that go? So I'll just talk a little bit about the seeds while I find this. So the way that we do the seeds is the same way. So we sell the seeds through actually through my mom, the one that talked uh, first here. Um, she pulled together the resources to get these seeds. And then we, through my store, it, we use this kind of as the template. Um, her product moves through my store exclusively and then is able to be shipped wherever, however, everything from there. Um, and then the online store is basically the, the funds then turn back to her. Um, and then the store gets a cut and then the product gets shipped to the individual and we do it on a wholesale rate. And so the, those who have the link to the store or have the access to that specific product are getting it 10 times cheaper than they would anywhere else because there's no middleman. We, we cut it out of the whole equation. Um, and so what I was, I, I experimented a little bit further with this concept and I added to my store some elderberry. Um, the elderberry comes from a local farm right around the corner from me who does everything uh, organically and then they grow the elderberry and then they bottle it. And then, um, what I did with him was the similar thing with the seeds. We do it in group buys. And so when I get about, uh, uh, every 15th day of the month, when the group buys reach a minimum, I submit all the orders over to him and then he drop ships them. So it keeps his farm in operation and his company totally exclusive, like a vendor for, for any other store. Right. But what it does it is it allows me to, to step out of the equation. And I have this platform where individuals can come access whatever need it is that they have, whether it be a service or a product, and then in a given exchange, right, there's a, there is a financial contribution for these products. And then they, they get their surplus, they get their cash. And then it's just this pass through entity basically. Um, but then it has another a flip side to the coin where because the store is the one facilitating the need, um, the, the store takes its cut so it can grow and, and continue to develop that. And then it pushes this mission forward. So the store is kind of the concept. Um, and I will actually. So there is, there is a couple, um, it's Jen again speaking. <laughs> there is a couple, uh, it says fireweeds. It's just, so that's why I'm saying my name. Um, uh, there is a couple of so different groups here, like the Weston A. Price Foundation, which I'm involved in and help run. Um, and um, there's a couple of, of other groups as well on uh, Telegram that do something similar, but the concept that is missing is a central place or a central, central hub that, um, yeah. you know, all of these different farmers and, um, you know, permaculturists or plant medicine guides or whoever, have different things like teas or whatever they in order to come and and offer ex exclusively that is something that is not present right now yeah. that i that i'm aware of yeah and that's a big part of the whole 
the whole plan and you've got to have that that platform that can act as a pass through so um let me see if i can pull this up i'm going to screen share for a second here and maybe this will maybe i'm i'm beating a, this a little bit too hard but i want to zoom out here so this is we'll just go way way Okay, so where I'm at in Missouri, uh, I'm not going to show you all the details on this, uh, where the farm, where the properties are, because a lot of them are um, their their clients or their it's just private information. So I will give a ballpark though. So so over here in in Trenton, I have um, I'm aware of let's see one, two, three. So there's, there's five, maybe four, we'll say four to be safe, four uh, urban homes and one rural home right on the boundary um, that are all either ready or willing to participate in this sort of thing. And we, if we move over here to the Jameson area, um, there's a, a whole slew of individuals. And <laughs> uh, I don't want to zoom in because there's so many on that spot. I don't know if I got my place marks or whatever, but but this area right here in Jameson actually is where the bulk of our properties are on, in the rural setting. And all of that surplus then can be connected to the Trenton, the Jamesport, the Gallatin, right? Whatever, whatever cities are around it. And so that concept of the, of the, the counties being the outside edge and then, or, or uh, being self-sufficient inside the zones of the county and then extending from there all happens from the, herb, from the rural zones. But then there's a couple folks who are a little bit further south, um, down in this area, who have even more acreage, and then some that are, are uh, urban as well. And so my goal is, I mean, I could do like a Facebook group and we could just, you know, get all of the areas and it'd just be like another classified. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be to the same level that I would like to take this. And so, having that platform and that's why i chose to do the the store the online store is because um it allows somebody here let's say, use hamilton as an example and then someone in gallatin and then chillicothe and then let's say way over here in kansas city uh they've got you know an, another operation the problem that that i ran into and how to how to let people do this pass back and forth is that they've got to be able to drop ship if they're going to go outside their own zone their own town and county um but then we could still facilitate that for them because there wouldn't be any reason not to um but really the infrastructure needs to be on a home base and then a street and then this the town and then the city and then so on right oh no can you hear my kids in the back <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pull up this picture here. I really wanted to. So, so Jamin, I just had a quick question. Um, does anyone in this group or anyone that you know are um, build websites to be able to build this type of platform that we're that you're talking about? Yeah. So, so on that topic, I have individuals um, that are capable of doing everything from. Uh, on uh, website development to actual business plans and coalition forming um, as far as the professional level goes. Um, and then legal advice. I've got some folks that are capable of doing implementation on a large scale, everybody from, in, from engineers to architects and the growing network of, de of, de of designers in Missouri that are mostly Southern to me. Um, and then we have a, um, uh, through a company called Green Space, we have a network of landscapers that can actually get out there and put the trees in the ground. So the problem with that is that because this is based on, on professionals, really, um, people who do that, these things for a living, it, it costs money. And, right. and most folks hit that roadblock. And so I feel like if, if, we, could, if we could facilitate a, a, re, a, a plan and a structure for them to grab onto, specifically the TIAG network, give them a membership or a, a way to access that membership, 
and then move it forward like it were an exclusive membership and anybody within the membership had access to all of the perks and the other individuals who brought or contributed a, a, an asset or a resource of some kind, product or service, um, then it would become a, an incentive to, to take part in, in accessing it. Um, but I don't, I don't have the answer as far as how to get professional services available at a, at a, at a uh, large scale. Like I, I can go to the outside borders of Missouri, anything past that, it, the travel is too extensive to send my guys. Right. I have, um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll talk to a colleague of mine. Um, she's a owner of a com company called Cardia Communities. And they actually um, build, um, they invest and build in um, permaculture and regenerative um, land and eco, eco villages all over okay. uh, Mexico and the States. Um, and that's kind of their specialty, not to bring them into this, but just in the matter of um, getting their opinion and whether or not that's something they might be able to help with as far as, um, kind of streamlining that process that you're yeah. talking about that would be very helpful actually to get some advice yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. um so so another another border i know a lot of the people on here are probably um probably bound in canada um and i know some of your names so i can i can tell you are um yeah but but for me this is something that we, i would like to see move way past borders um, and I know that you guys have out there have a real big uh, leg up on us here <laughs> uh, in the Calgary and the and and Cardston areas out there, um, but in Alberta. But but I don't know of any models that exist. So if you guys do, I would love to see them. Damon, I wanted Not to just share. See them, but, but connect with them. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to share something too, um, because as you're talking, I'm thinking about all the people that are in our homesteading homesteading group. Um, we have, just for those that don't know, we have a homesteading group where we um, share um, information on gardening and homesteading. And it's just a nice little community where we help and support one another. And that's where we offer a lot of our group buys on on the seeds as well as other things. Um, that's where it first started before Jamin and I uh, began to partner with the seeds on his website. And um, the reason I bring this up is because we have almost 2,500 people on that group. Now, not everybody is active all the time, but um, through the network of our seeds, um, I can see that we have people clear up from Canada all the way across the entire United States. And there's a lot of people with um, property, both small little spots and great big acres. Um, I can think of at least um, five or six that I'm very close to um, that live, uh, there's some in Utah, some in Idaho, um, some in West Virginia, um, some in North Carolina. Um, there's people in Utah, people in, um, you know, of course, Missouri. Um, and they're all over. And I know that um, they probably have not heard about this meeting you were going to have tonight. But I think if we gave them the video, I think that they would be thrilled and they would be super excited to find out how to get this going because they're, they all have a very, um, you know, they're, they're loving, kind people. They have a very um, abundant mindset. They have a desire to um, share and to help others and not just themselves. And that's part of the reason that they got the land that they got because they want to be able to provide for not only their own family, but others. And so I think that this would be a good model um, that, you know, if you got some more of those people involved in the homesteading group, you could very easily, very quickly gather people from all across the United States. So, so on that, on that note, speaking of, of, uh, Part of the some of the some of the uh, prompts that I, I put in the in the in the Telegram chats and other places that that I'm in um, were were the the connections that I have. So my network has grown extensively over the last couple of years, leading up to me talking about the idea that I proposed tonight. Um, 
I don't think that's exact. I don't, I have a hard time believing in coincidences. Um, but, but the abilities that I have right now to bring people together on a project is pretty good. It's pretty extensive actually. Um, and I've been doing that at certain levels already, testing the waters on some things and, and then uh, designing properties and, and working with landscapers. And I, I have a huge background in construction and, and landscaping. So that was really where I met a lot of implementers, people that can handle the design renderings and things of that nature. Um, but the problem that I ran into is it's a very professional service. And so in order for me to reach out to some of these people, we've got to have something organized. They're very busy people. They're very professional in what they do. And they were, they're really good hearts, good, good souls. Um, but in order for them to, to feel the call, uh, I would like to have some structure outside of what I presented tonight. So in, in conjunction with the, however many properties I told you about, um, she doesn't know that I'm going to mention her. She might be here. <laughs> we have family in Hawaii. Um, that I reached out to, I was hoping I could get on tonight, um, who they expressed interest to me at one time about start opening up a banana farm out there. And so well, as soon as I heard it, that idea, um, it connected, they're on Oahu. And so it connected in my mind another, if you could visually put lines across all these properties on, this, on the map of, the, the, of America, right? Then run one all the way out to, to Hawaii. <laughs> so now we have this, this connection there. But but really what I would like to see happen is, is leaders in every region taking the TIAG concept within their home and starting their community in that area. And then if we, if we developed it like you had a central head to basically manage the details and then below had two assistants for that individual, um, and then you had the, the community, then one could handle the, the needs of the surplus and, and then one could handle the technicalities of the, I don't know, of the, of the member needs, for example. Uh, and then the head of that, of that leadership platform, that triangle, um, would be able to facilitate the, that region's needs and, and surpluses, et cetera, with the total network. Um, and then that would be able to bounce from network to network to network through those individuals. And then we just need a board of individuals willing to give of their time and abilities to put together the infrastructure from a council level um, to then appoint those individuals. So it can kind of work on a, on a full system approach. Um, just so you know, I think Brittany tried to get on, but I don't think she was able to. Something happened and it wasn't working for her, so she may not have gotten on. That, I'll be honest, that was probably my fault. I realized that I did not disable the waiting room. Yeah, she did have, she did say the waiting thing came up. Yeah, speaking of, I just let somebody else in from the waiting room, so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it's recorded. It'll be on the YouTube channel. So before I, I, I wrap it up, I want to show you... Um, oh boy, where did it go? Right here. Okay. This is really important. This is how I've started to test the theory already. Okay. Um, but oh, which screen are you seeing? Uh, Haven Permaculture. Okay. <laughs> Oh, of course it did that. Hold on, I gotta switch screens here. So, Jamin, if I'm understanding correctly, the biggest thing that you're looking for is people that can help you implement this on a larger scale, and you want some ideas? Yeah. Yeah, so... So let me show you this. This is what I've been doing already. Okay. So this is the experiment um, in its totality right now. The way that I run the store um, is kind of mixed right now. It's really not a very uh, complete store, but, but it's based on a business model where the, the online store offers surplus and products. All the products 
are drop shipped directly from the permaculture properties or the, the, the family homesteads or whatever they are, even if it's just a random Joe that's got a garden in his backyard and wants to sell tomatoes. Um, there's, also, there's also a lot of Amish in my area who I intend to reach out to who don't have internet, so that'll be fun. Um, but the, uh, the concept is that they have a service or a product and they offer it from their location and then my store acts as the platform. And that's it. It's that simple. Um, so far, the things that I personally have contributed to the store um, are highlighted in yellow, the minus the actual categories, food surplus and plant surplus. Um, we do do some seeds, but it, it acts more like a, it acts more like a, a, a uh, what's it called a vendor rather than my own product um, because of the way that it's in the store um, but that the lulu's garden store itself i set it up as a dba of my company so that i could actually move money legally and so the legalities of it is, is, is it's a technicality i don't understand how to figure out making a coalition or a a, a community group in an area not just local to me but globally even i don't i don't know how to run it that far so it stopped at that point and so I need advisors, I need individuals willing to, to uh, help in facilitating the creation and finalization of a platform, and not just on my test dummy store, but actually on a permanent location, an app and a website, um, and then be able to move those things beyond where I have it now. So it's not just a DBA of my company, it's actually its own entity. Um, but then I don't want it to be taxed and run through the government restrictions like most things are today we, we know they've got their grips and all of that too so i want it to remain independent of that so i'm totally open to ideas on how to structure it i i this is tasha by the way um i'm just curious like how that would work out for things that like if you were selling seeds or produce to people across state lines or different state regulations that you might have to deal with and i know like one in particular is like you cannot sell milk between states that's not legal um and then i mean i guess you wouldn't be able to do that this way anyway because milk has a whole bunch of <laughs> regulations around it right. um and you know let's be fair some for good reason um but i i'm just wondering like like if you have a sense of like what the limits are so so the way that it has to be structured is like i said before on autonomy autonomy is that how you say that that word keeps slipping me tonight <laughs> um it's got to be everybody has to remain autonomous so if you're a it's business autonomy autonomy, autonomy. There you go. <laughs> I don't know you get, I, you're trying to mix up uh, anonymity and autonomy but that's we what get I'm doing. It. yeah thanks <laughs> Uh, no, but everybody has to be able to remain autonomous, right? So if you're already selling milk, for example, you probably already have an established farm or business where you're able to understand those regulations for your specific product. And so in order for you to sell that particular product in the network, you would only be able to, you'd be restricted to your local uh, jurisdiction because that's not something that you would be able to ship overseas. And so when, it, when we put it into the store, you would be able to say, hey, this is this is uh, the product, here's the listing, here's the details, here's what I do for the for the group. But the shipping information that you put in in a in a in a uh, e-commerce store, you can limit based on where it's going. And so you would be able to just highlight your zone and then you know, anything outside of that is MIA to that product, but you could list others elsewhere. Um, so, so go ahead. Damon, if I can jump on this is Jeremiah. Um, Am I getting an echo? You guys hearing an echo? Maybe it's just me. Um, so I, I, the way I kind of think of it, or another way of thinking it, is like a virtual farmer's market. You have yeah. a farmer's market where people get together, they, they, they practice commerce in their own way, um, and the, the kind of like PayPal, they don't facilitate you know, they're facilitating transactions, but at a, in a farmer's market, or maybe call it a virtual farmer's market, a person would sell goods or service, maybe have their own little spiel or 
advertisement or storefront that they could put in that farmer's market. Right. Um, and, you know, the, the transactions that would go through would be, could be, hey, you know, we have, you know, Venmo or here's, here's the, you know, here's the capabilities we have to do. But in the end, the person selling the good or service has the liability from that and not the store. The store is like, yeah. you know, that we're providing the, the, the idea would be that they, the storefront is essentially kind of like you go to the farmer's market, you have to pay for your stall or pay for your booth. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, that payment and essentially covers the technology fee of what it mean, what is needed to host and to facilitate communication and to, sell, to, to create to create things so that, you know it's efficient. Like you know, we, the smart it's a smart farmers market, if you if you, right. if and, you will. And I, don't want it, I don't want it to be limited to. So I'm going to be completely frank with you. I don't think that relying on the current economic systems is very smart, whether it be product services or any other level of of our day-to-day -day life as people. I think that, yeah. I think I want to totally overhaul it, right? I, I think there's enough people already doing that, that have those ideas and that knowledge that's way superior to me, um, but that we can plug into. Like Verge Permaculture, for example, has something called the Fifth World Coin that they'll talk about later that I, I'm super excited about. Um, but there's a lot of options that, that are available and being being put together for the same reasons that I'm talking about today. What I would like to be able to focus on though for this particular thing is services and products that act as their own currency. So, so for example, uh, in the store that I, that's kind of a test dummy right now, it's, it's moving cash. That's what it's doing. Um, it's currency is cash. I would like to be able to create a platform that it's totally nonprofit. The whole purpose of it is, is, hey, I've got herbs, uh, I'm going to sell for this many, I don't know, nails, <laughs> so I can build my chicken coop, you know, whatever, whatever they want. Um, and then, of course, if somebody wants a, a bulk surplus and they're looking for cash, then they list it for that much, and, and whatever it may be, then they sell it. Um, so, Jamin, you're thinking like a trade, barter, and sell. Yeah, a closed book economy, basically, yeah. So I put in the um, chat just a second ago, a type form survey. It has a couple of people have left already, so I should have put that in there sooner. But um, before anybody jumps off, fill out that survey because it does kind of get a starting point um, from this particular group. Um, I was just going to let you know, um, I was introduced to somebody just recently who actually, I think they might be Amish and maybe that's why they can do this. I don't know for sure. But um, I'm going to reach out to her and see what she says, because they actually send cottage cheese, butter, um, organic cheese, milk. They send all kinds of dairy products all across the country and maybe even into Canada. And I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how they're able to make that work when there are regulations. But the girl that talked to me, she said that they've been doing it for quite some time. And so I'll see if I can send her over to you and maybe you guys can figure that out, um, you know, how that works and maybe she'll have some ideas. Yeah, I, I'd appreciate all the ideas possible. Um, if anybody has any other solutions or would like to volunteer their help. I, I should say quickly that I, I said milk only because I think of raw milk as milk and like the other stuff isn't really milk. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> raw yeah, milk they, you cannot sell over state lines. That's that's illegal. Gotcha. Right. And and I believe that they are sending raw milk. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know, you know, maybe because I think it's from an Amish community, they might have a different regulation. I don't know. Um, I haven't found out, I haven't had a chance to reach out to her a little bit more to find out the details. Um, she said that it's completely legal the way that they're doing it. And so I don't know if they found a loophole. I'm really not sure. Um, it would be interesting well, to find out. If we can create the pass-through entity or, or platform, so to speak, then, um, then we can get it functional. But 
and, and all the laws and legalities can get worked out. This is kind of the model. This is one of the slides I was looking for earlier. This is kind of the model that I would like to base it on. Um, that's why I mentioned coalitions in the beginning. Um, the mentors coalition, when I originally thought of the idea was, it was very centered in individuals joining people who had resources or assets or connections that they would willingly bring to the table, right? You picture the round table and everybody's saying, hey, here's what's backing me. I can contribute this much. Let's do something of impact over here in Switzerland, you know, or hey, let's do something in Idaho um, or Calgary. Um, and then those, mo and basically then if it got approved, the whole table could move together all of their army of surplus to that particular project. Um, and then we could build that up and then go do another one and build that up and go do another one and build that up. And so the coalition would be making change all around the, the globe, really. Um, but if we structured it as a membership, this is sort of the model that I was running with. Um, does that poke any thoughts at anybody? Anybody looking at this visual? What, is, what does that speak to you? To me, it just kind of um, seems like, you know, you're all helping to rise, rise each other up, you know, because like the picture in the background seems like they're traveling up a mountain and they're all helping one another. Yeah, yeah, that was the logo I used for the company. Um, yeah, basically a decentralized system, token-based. Interesting. 